Now, I don't do tutorials too often on this channel, but if there's one thing I wanted to show you all, it's how I make those crispy quality GIFs for platforms like Twitter that will only allow you to upload GIFs under 15 megabytes. Now, most people assume that to get their video under a certain file size, they need to compress it, which causes color banding, distortion, and overall looks really distracting. I'm going to show you two methods today, the old method that is completely free and the new method I use to this day that has saved me hours of time and stress. Regardless of whichever method you choose, they should both have similar results just as long as you follow these four rules, size, compression, color, and frame rate. I'll be getting back to these later in the video, but just keep them in mind for now. Starting off with the old method, which is using Photoshop to export your GIF. If you have Adobe Media Encoder, that can work in some cases, but you won't have as much flexibility as you would in Photoshop. You'll start by taking your video and exporting it as a PNG sequence. After importing it into Photoshop, you'll select the correct frame rate and go to export, save for web. Under the presets, I prefer to select GIF 128 dithered, change the colors to 256 and change the selective setting to perceptual. These are the highest quality settings for GIFs in Photoshop, which helps me see my max file size so I can then work my way down. In this case, this animation at max settings is 59.61 megabytes, which is way too high. This is where the four rules I mentioned earlier comes into play, size, compression, color, and frame rate. What I do is go down the list step by step and make adjustments to each until I get the file size that I want. The reason why I do these in this specific order is because the first steps are the least noticeable to the eye, while the last steps will be the most noticeable. The first step is the most underutilized, but also the most important, and that is adjusting the size. On apps like Twitter, these GIFs are going to be squished into the website's interface and will likely never fill up the entire screen. We can take advantage of this, and although it might make sense to keep the resolution high to retain quality, we can actually reduce the overall size quite a bit. For this example here, I knocked down the resolution from 1920 by 1080 pixels to 1080 by 608, which is usually the lowest resolution you can get away with before it starts to become noticeable. Since the file size was still a bit too high, I went to the next step, compression, and compressed my GIF using the dither setting in Photoshop by about 5%. With just these two settings, I reduced my GIF to 13.8 megabytes, meaning I don't need to go through the other steps, color, and frame rate, which in most cases you'll want to avoid anyways. If your GIF is still above your desired file size, what you'd need to do is reduce your colors from 256 to 128. I probably wouldn't reduce the colors any further than that since it'll start to become noticeable. But if that still isn't enough, you can try to reduce the overall frame rate, for example, reducing a 30 FPS video to 25. Your goal when going through these steps is to find a balance where none of the corners you've cut are noticeable at first glance. Just for comparison, here's what the GIF looks like completely uncompressed, the GIF with the settings we've selected by adjusting the scale and adding a 5% compression, and what the GIF would have looked like had we had just compressed the animation without any other settings being changed. Now the new method I use to create all my GIFs is through a plugin from AE Scripts called GIF gun. It costs around $30, but to be honest, it saved me so much time that I'd be willing to spend a lot more on it just because I export GIFs for social media so often. Since GIF gun is directly within After Effects, all you need to do is find your GIF gun tab, click the settings, and adjust using the same four-step method starting with size. For example, I'll set the width to 1080 pixels just like what we did in Photoshop. I can also choose to adjust the frame rate, colors, and compression. If you decide to get GIF gun, I would also play around with the other settings, again, trying to find a balance between all of your options so that the result looks as close as possible to the uncompressed animation. In my case, I'm doing the exact same thing we did in Photoshop, so keeping the compression low and making the width 1080 pixels wide. After you've finished, simply click Done, navigate back to your GIF Gun tab and click Make GIF. Here you can see the difference between the old method and the new method. They're both very similar, the only difference being that the first method is free, while the second method requires the GIF Gun plugin, but can save loads of time if you export GIFs often. So to summarize, try sticking with the four step method I've shown you today and generally try not to go below any of the settings I have listed on screen. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.